Income tax 2022-2023 IRA distribution software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040 populating it with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to it, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related schedules and forms. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point as usual, single filer, Mr. Anderson, no depend dependents, 100,000 at the W-2 income to start with. And then we got the standard deduction, 12,950, getting us to the taxable income, 87,050. And we mirror that in our worksheet over here. This is our tax formula. 87,050, depending on the software to do the calculation on the second page, where we have the calculation at the 14,774, and then we had our withholdings getting us to the uh, amount of refund, which is mirrored here. But we're focused here now on the tax calculation first page side of things, and we're looking now at distributions from an IRA distribution. Now, remember, when we're thinking about IRA distributions, you can kind of think in general of the general concept of the IRS trying to incentivize us to save for retirement. What they're doing is taking, they're not coming up with anything new. Like, it's not like they came up with a new investment tool. This is a totally new investment tool. No, they're just saying that if you use your normal investment tools, which are usually mutual funds, and put them under the umbrella of an IRA, then you possibly could get tax benefits of that. The typical tax benefit, whether it be a 410k, 403b, IRA distribution, is that you don't have to include it in income or you get to remove it from income with an above the line deduction when you put it in. And then uh, at the, at, when you get the distribution at retirement, then that's when you have to include it in income. So you get this tax deferral uh, type of situation. Now we're focusing here uh, on the IRA, but you have similar kind of concepts with the 401k and whatnot in that if you were to take the money out early, then you're gonna have to pay taxes on it because you're gonna have to pay taxes when you pull it out at retirement or whenever you pull it out, but you also might have penalties by that point in time. So the general rule would be that during someone's working years, you would expect most of their income to be some kind of earned income, such as W-2 income, Schedule C income, and that kind of thing. Uh, and then in retirement years, you would expect to see people having more income, not from W-2 income because they're past their working years and having distributions from things like IRAs and pension plans uh, down here. And you could have similar kind of situations where you have withholdings and whatnot from uh, the IRA distributions and the pension distributions. What you wanna be very careful of and mindful of when talking to clients is that if they're trying to go from one job to another or they're going from one financial uh, company to another, then they don't wanna take the money out of their IRA or 401ks or so on, but rather make sure that they record it as a rollover. Otherwise, they're gonna have this issue of a distribution problem. Uh, because they'll be penalized for an early distribution. So that's the general idea. Charming, Ronald. But yes, that is the general idea. So let's first just think about a situation where, where we'll, we'll, we'll change the age so we have someone that's not going to be hit with a, with a penalty for uh, taking the distribution early, and then we'll look at a penalty type of situation. All right. So I've changed the age now, so they're in retirement age, and then the code I'm gonna put as, uh, it's gonna be a normal distribution. And that's gonna be a code that will typically be reflected on the form you're gonna receive, which is gonna be something like a 1099-R, which will be uh, required to be given by the government from the financial institution. U.S. law requires financial institutions typically, and it's usually fairly straightforward where you've got the gross distribution up top, the taxable amount 
uh, below it, if it's a normal distribution, you would expect these two things to, to be the same because you got the tax benefit when you put the money in, therefore the distribution is taxable. The distribution code then down here on line seven uh, would be a normal distribution code, which I believe is a seven. You can, and, and if, you, if you see something unusual on this line, you can take a look at this second page over here of the form or look it up in the IRS website gives you a list of the distribution codes. First, we have the early distribution. That's the one you don't want to see. In most cases, they're under uh, age 59 and a half, right? Because they took the distribution early before the retirement years. Early distribution exception applies. So now you've got an early distribution, but there's an exception. Uh, disability, possibly having an exception. Death, except prohibited trans uh, transaction. Section 1035, exchange. Uh, that's, that's an unusual one to see. Seven, normal distribution. So if someone is over uh, or in retirement, you would expect then that would be the code that you would expect to see, a normal kind of distribution at that point. If they're under the retirement age, then you expect to see a number one. That's what you don't want to see unless you can get to some other exception other than the age requirement to pull the money out. And then eight, excess uh, contributions plus earnings, nine, uh, cost of current life insurance protection and so on. So let's assume it's just a normal distribution for now. And we're going to say that it's uh, an IRA. So let's check it off as an IRA. And I'm going to say it's for $1,000 and all of it is taxable. So that's going to be my data input because I'm imagining there's an amount here, here, distribution uh, code number one. So let's go back on over and say, okay, boom. So now I can see that we've got then the IRA here and we've got the taxable amount is the uh, 1000 on the IRA. That's bringing the income up. Let's actually look at the form 1040. I'm pulling over to the 1040 SR because of the age, but I think it's still easier to see in the same format of a 1040. So I'm going to go to the 1040. That, now they were born, born before January 2nd. There's the 100,000, there's the added thousand. Now the standard deduction has changed because they're over the age to, uh, to have it change. So let's pull those into our forms over here. I'm gonna imagine now there's gonna be income from an IRA. So I'm gonna go back on over a distribution. So we're gonna say, all right, let's say that these are, this is an IRA, let's say a distribution, right? Is that what I had over here? This is gonna be, the IRA distributions, and then I'm gonna make this black and white. So I'll make it black and white as a header, and I'll leave a bit of space because we might have a few of them. If someone is in retirement, they could have a quite a few places that they're getting distributions from. So I'll leave a bit of space here, and I'll just put uh, IRA one or whatever, the company, $1,000, sum it up down below with the total Total, total IRA distribution. And then we'll put this on the outside equals the sum here, boom, 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 up to the 1000. And this, I should have moved this down. I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just cut this control X and I'm gonna put it down here. And then I'm gonna delete a couple rows. So now we've got the, the W-2 stuff and then the IRA distributions and I'm gonna sum it up on the outside. Equals sum it up on the outer column. And so there's the 101 that pulls over to the first tab. There's the 101. The standard deduction needs to be increased because they're over the, the age to, for it. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be single plus this, cap, this item. And so that's going to give us the 14.7. That brings us to the 86.300. 86.300. That is boom. Looks good. Page two. Then 14.609. Calculation for the tax. Just a, they call it a tax calculation, which is just a. So I'm going to say this is now 14.609. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the normal kind of situation. Now let's let's imagine a situation where all of the income is basically from the 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 ira distribution instead of the wages income so i'll make this now a hundred thousand i'll make this zero and then i'll imagine that we had withholdings 
with the distribution. So I'm gonna go back on over here. This would be a very large distribution, but same concept. Let's make it 100,000. And then let's imagine that we withheld on it. The whole thing is taxable. We withheld uh, 15,000, let's say. So now we withheld 15,000 on the 100,000 and in my W-2 income, there is none. I'm gonna say because we don't have any of that. Boom, get out of here. Get out of here. And we're gonna go to the forms then. I'm still gonna just look at the uh, 1040. So now we've got the taxable amount, IRA distribution, 100,000. If I was to look at my form, I would imagine 100 here, 100 here, and then the code uh, would be seven. And then we would have uh, the federal income tax withheld box four, 15,000, right? And so then I can go back on over and say, there's the 100,000. So if I mirror that over here, I'd say, okay, now I don't have any W-2 income that's gone this is now a hundred thousand from the 1099 r r and then 14 7 85 300 so that's the 85 300 and then page two has the withholdings the withholdings are not from the w2 though if i go to the payments i'm going to say these i'm going to make some space make some space here insert insert and these are going to be withholdings this is let's just say 1099 r withholdings withholdings something like that should serve the purpose so we can just do this because there's no w2 stuff and i'm going to make some blue areas leaving some space because we could have a few quite a few 1099 r's for the retired folk and so this is going to be 1099 are the first one 15,000 summing that up down below I'm gonna delete a couple lines I know I'm doing this fast but it's not an Excel course I'm just showing how we can kind of mirror this in Excel this is gonna then pull over this needs to be summed up here this is gonna pull over then to page one so I'm gonna go back on over boom page one that's not page one there's too many tabs it's out of control. So there's the 15 getting us to the 391. 390, something's wrong. Something's wrong. 1439389 is the tax. 1439, 15611.611. Okay, so that's just the general idea. You get the gist. The gist has been gotten, I think. So then. Let's just take a look at, at another one of, of these items. So the other main one that we might see is like an early type of distribution. And then we also could see like a, a rollover situation. So I'm gonna bring it back to where we were before. I'm gonna change the age. So now they're not in retirement years. And then if they have a distribution, it's gonna be an early distribution. So now we're imagining that there's 100,000 here. It's all gonna be taxable but the distribution code let's say it's a thousand here and a thousand here the distribution code is now going to be a one which is the bad distribution code because then you can be hit with a penalty on top of it right so now i've got a one thousand dollars uh input and there's no withholdings here so now i'm going to go back on over so now they're under uh the age and the, the form is indicating that it's an early distribution so 100,000 w2 income again and now we've got the ira 100,000 here so we're at the same po point that we started at the beginning to 12,950 we're back to 8850 uh, so let's bring that over here so now i'm going to go okay 100,000 not from the ira but from the w2 income again 100,000 the withholding or payments is going to be the 15,000 up here, 15,000. And then we're gonna say there's the 100 and then this is back to just normal withholdings or standard deduction of a single individual that's not over uh, the age limit to boost it up. There's the 8750, so 80, 8850. And so because I have 1,000 in the distribution, 1,000 in the distribution, 101, 12,950, 8,850. Okay, so then if I go to page two, calculates the TAC, 14,994. I'm gonna let 
I'm gonna do that 14994 and then uh, we also have this hundred dollars of other taxes so it's and it's coming from schedule 2 as you can see so schedule 2 we've got the hundred thousand uh, of additional taxes so if I was to add like a schedule 2 here uh, which, so let's add that I'll say schedule 2 is additional taxes so we'll deal with that uh, later or let's just pull it in here I have other taxes uh, here so let's pull it in from this tab that I started and then so we had self-employment and let's say that we call this what, what are we gonna call it we're gonna call it uh, we're gonna call it additional tax on IRA so added added tax on IRA which might make it save a little bit of room added tax on the IRA and let's make it black and white so I'll make it black and white. We shouldn't need much space down below because we shouldn't have that happening all the time. So I'll just have a couple fields for it maybe to make it blue and bordered and then IRA one or whatever the IRA is. And, and you could calculate it. The added tax is usually gonna be equal to the IRA distribution, which was 1000 times 10%, point 0.1 times 10%, point one so uh so 10 hold on a second k pos o this 1000 times 0.1 100 and then we'll have total total added tax on ira equals the sum of those two and then this totals it up down below so that should pull into page one of the added tax bringing us to 1594 so 1594 if i go to the 1040 page two just to double check this 1594 and then we paid 15,000, so that gets us down to the to the 94. so that's the general idea this amount due this time so that's what you don't want to see happen a uh, hundred dollars doesn't look too bad but obviously you can see that can start get quite big quite quickly if someone just pulled out their their entire ira or similarly if they pulled their entire 401k and just say yeah just give me the 401k if i'm switching jobs or something because then you're going to get hit with a, a big penalty because that could be quite substantial uh in dollar amount that could be in the 401k so be careful of that now what you could do to not have that happen is roll it over so i'm going to say i don't want to see a, a one there i want to see a g there and that's going to indicate that it's a that it's a rollover of some kind so so you're hoping when you go to another or uh financial institution to have your investments in you don't want to pull your money out and then put them uh, you know well you you might be able to structure it that but that way but you would like to make sure that you structure it in some type of way that it's going to qualify for a rollover and oftentimes you might want to go to the new financial institution and say hey look I'm rolling my money over from whatever it was before, Vanguard or E-Trade or whatever, and I'm putting it in here. I want you to structure that as a rollover under whatever kind of retirement account will fit because it's currently under an, an IRA or something. And usually the financial institutions wanting to have your business will be able to help you facilitate that. And they're quite, quite uh, kind in doing so because you know they want your money in their place instead of the other place. So just make sure to do that. Otherwise you get hit with a penalty and that would be bad. So now you got the same 100,000. Now though, it's calculated as a rollover. Now note that when you do that, some people, uh, well actually now it, it's not gonna be taxable at all. So now I'm gonna go back on over and say, there's nothing here. So we're gonna say, now there would be something in box one possibly but not box uh 2a because it's saying hey look there was kind of like a distribution meaning it came out of one account that's under the umbrella of an ira but it went into another one therefore it's not a taxable event and that's what you'd like to be able to see why isn't it because of the description code that's going to be down here which calculated it as a rollover which is usually the most common format of it not being taxable so uh it, so if someone needs the money notice that in like this this whole like uh emergency thing when when the government 
told people that they couldn't go to work or anything because of social distancing with the whole COVID thing, that caused financial emergencies to many people. And many people can come up with financial emergencies for whatever reason, right? They need the money. If they have the money, it's in their IRA or under their IRA or 401k plan, but they can't take it out because if they take it out, they get hit with a penalty. So in those kinds of situations, you want to you want to see, okay, is there any kind of situation where it can have it, have it like this, where I can pull the money out in some way and have some rationale, which would be box represented by these codes that would allow me to take the money out, right? <laughs> Without getting hit with a penalty. You're still going to have, if you were to take the money out and not have it rolled over, then you still might have to pay taxes on it. So let's say you took the money out and the government said, well, now it's a qualified uh, wait, you took it out because of an emergency. Well, then they're just not going to hit you with the tax. Uh, taxes! <laughs> taxes! I mean, the, the added tax penalty. But they're still going to make you pay the taxes on it because because uh, you got you you got the the benefit when you put the money in for it. In this case, you're not actually really taking it out. You're just rolling it over. But if you did take it out and you had a qualified reason for taking it out, then it's likely it would still be recorded as income, but you wouldn't be hit with that 10% penalty. So a lot of times people get confused between the fact that it's recorded as income and the fact that you're getting hit with a 10% penalty. If you're actually taking the money out and not rolling it over, even if it's a qualified distribution, usually because you're in retirement age or possibly because there's some other ex like reason for taking it out early, then, then you're still gonna have to record it as income most likely. You're just not going to get hit with the 10% penalty in that case. That's the general rule. So now we're saying it's over here as an IRA distribution, but none of it's some taxable amount. And they give you the, the code up here, which is basically saying it's a rollover. So now we're telling the IRS, look, this matches what's on the, the form. So, but it's a, but it's a rollover. So then it wouldn't be included in income. So those are the general uh, rules. Just remember that if you're dealing with someone that's, that's in retirement, it's likely that you're going to see a lot more of this kind of activity and it's likely that you're going to have to do a little bit more complex work possibly with managing the withholdings through the the the, the distributions from IRAs and pensions and whatnot or possibly calculating estimated tax payments whereas if the w-2 wages usually obviously the withholdings are calculated up top with the with, with the with the holdings and then on the input side when you're putting money into the retirement plans which we'll talk more about later because right now we're talking about we're talking about the income side of things when we're talking about the the putting money into an ira it's kind of like a deduction in some ways right it's an above the line deduction or a removing of the amount from income that would be reflected on the w-2 form so then you're going to get a tax benefit when you put the money in so when you put the money in you basically get a tax benefit, which is kind of like an, a, a deduction or the equivalent being a reduction of the taxable income. And then when you take the money out, you're going to get hit with the tax because it's just a deferral. And if the, you don't take it out because you're in retirement and you have no other reason to take it out, you could also get hit with a penalty. Also, just want to point out that the only reason you put the money into an IRA account or, or a 401k is not because it's some special magical investment that the government made up, right? The government's not good at making up investment tools. The government is just good at not hitting you when you put your money somewhere. So they're going to say, I'm not going to hit you <laughs> with, with, with taxes if you, put your, if you put your money under this investment tool that was made up by financial investors, just smart people, not the government, right? And then it's up, but it's under the umbrella of of an IRA or whatnot to have a, a tax shelter. So the government doesn't hit you when you put your money there, they're gonna hit you when you take the money out is the general rule. So in other words, most IRAs, 401k plans are using the same investment tools that you would use even if the government wasn't incentivizing putting money into these types of accounts, which would be mutual funds, typically uh, stocks and bonds and whatnot.